Look, I, I think um, there's a lot of momentum, obviously, on, on Japan. And if we sort of take a step back, there, there was really uh, a couple of sentiment drivers uh, of, of the pickup we've seen since last year and a, and a couple of fundamental drivers. Um, so sentiment-wise, uh, obviously, uh, the sort of Warren Buffett halo effect helped uh, in his visit last year in April um, also uh, was a positive. Yeah. He hasn't invested beyond the five companies he's already in. Um, but more than that... Um, uh, but, he, but he said he's taking a long-term bet on, on Japan. Uh, sorry, I said China, but on Japan. Yeah, on, in five companies. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so far. Uh, and obviously Japan has benefited. But he also said he was big on Japan. <laughs> I remember that interview uh, with yeah, yeah, CNBC's Becky Quick, where yeah. you know she's like, is, "Does uh, does this investment in these five companies because they essentially fuel the whole infrastructure drive in Japan and our investment uh, companies as well, right? Would this uh, be uh, an indication of you giving a thumbs up to Japan?" And he said, "Yes." Yeah, of course. I mean, these these companies, um, you know, they get criticized for being uh, black box, but basically they're involved in almost everything, uh, trading, uh, commodity related. Uh, not not only in in, in Japan but uh, China regionally uh, as well, and it's it's telling that uh, rather than try to pick a winner of the five, you just bought all five, yeah. um, which you can do if you're uh, got a portfolio of his size. It, but uh, uh, so in Japan has also benefited from not being China, uh, I think last mm -hmm. year in terms of some flows. But some of the fundamental uh, fundamentals that have improved, uh, we think, are going to help to drive the market this year. Um, one, obviously, being the increase in uh, 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 from the, the push from the TSE around structural reform mm -hmm. and the refocus on ROE. It's, it's never gone away, but it's certainly uh, the TSE is taking a very uh, on the front foot uh, approach. And on Monday, they're going to publish their first list of companies that are cooperating with their guidance. Um, and uh, you know, I think we, we know what, what most of the companies are going to be, um, but it's definitely a, a positive step. Um, and then we've also got the changing uh, interest rate environment uh, driven by... Um, I wouldn't say driven by the BOJ because the last thing the BOJ probably wants to do is raise uh, short-term <laughs> policy rates, um, but they may have to uh, if we yeah. continue to get some push on, on inflation. So this is having uh, obviously an impact on spreads are widening. That's good for financials. Um, it's also uh, if, if we, we obviously we're expecting the Fed to start cutting this year and that may have an impact on, on, on the currency as well. Uh, yeah, but uh, the policy pivot expected from uh, the BOJ may not be all good news for equities because whenever we, you know, you, policy accommodation is market positive, policy tightening is always not seen as uh, that great for, for equity markets. Um, and so I want to understand because obviously that will have a bearing on the currency. Yep. If the currency strengthens, then exporters, uh, you know, get a set, set back. Obviously, you know, their competitiveness goes down. Uh, it does give some reprieve on the side of uh, imported inflation. But overall, how does that set things up for a long-term growth trajectory at a time when Japan is facing growth challenges. It's not like they're out of the woods there. Absolutely. And you look at the latest GDP print. I mean, yeah. this is the reason they've still got negative short-term uh, policy rates. Exactly. So I don't think we're looking for uh, rates to go high. We're talking more about normalization. And normalization being uh, the first step would be to get to zero on the, on the, uh, on the policy rate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, but what's already happened is as they've let uh, the sort of 10-year drift in, in the in the widened yield curve control band, um, we're seeing a widening and a more normalization of, of across the curve. Right. Um, and so we think that's the more, more likely uh, scenario rather than uh, expecting rates in Japan to go up 